The distant glow of the street lamp cast a muted glow across the room, highlighting the worn-out edges of the furniture that had witnessed the silent erosion of our marriage. I sat on the edge of the bed, studying the man lying next to me. His face, etched with exhaustion, spoke of a weariness that had become all too familiar. As I traced the contours of his features with my fingertips, a sigh escaped my lips. Do you remember when we used to laugh until our stomachs hurt? I mused, the words hanging in the air like a distant melody. He turned toward me, his eyes reflecting a glint of remorse. Life gets busy, you know. It's not that simple anymore. But it used to be, I retorted, the bitterness seeping into my voice. You work late every night, and when you do come home, you bring your job with you. There's no us anymore. It's just you and your career. He sat up, his gaze fixed on the floor. I'm doing this for us, for our future. We can have everything we've ever dreamed of if I just work a bit harder. But what about us here now? I pleaded, my frustration bubbling to the surface. I need more than just promises of a better tomorrow. I need you here with me. He sighed, the weight of our unspoken words hanging heavily in the air. I'm doing this for you for us. Can't you see that? I looked away, the shadows in the room mirroring the growing distance between us. I used to see it. But now, all I see are the remnants of a marriage drowning in neglect. The room fell silent, the echoes of unspoken grievances lingering like ghosts in the corners. The room felt stifling as I sifted through the evidence, each piece a shard of betrayal slicing through the tenuous fabric of our marriage. The air hung heavy with tension as I confronted him, the accusatory silence filling the space between us. "'What's this, John?' I asked, my voice more tremulous than intended, holding up the damning receipt and membership card. He glanced away, unable to meet my eyes. It's not what you think, he mumbled, the words barely audible. Not what I think, I retorted, a bitter laugh escaping me. What other interpretation could there be? I trusted you. His eyes flickered with guilt, but defiance lingered in his tone. I messed up, okay, but it doesn't change the fact that I love you. Love me? I spat out, incredulous. Love doesn't hide in hotel rooms with someone else. It doesn't accumulate points for nights spent away from your spouse. He sighed, a mixture of frustration and resignation etched across his face. I know I messed up, but it's not that simple. It never is. I paced the room, the weight of his admission pressing on me. You've shattered my trust. How can we move forward from this? He hesitated, his eyes finally meeting mine. I messed up, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make it right. Let's work through this together. I scoffed, the bitterness overpowering any remnants of love. Work through this. There's no coming back from this, John. You broke us. As the words hung in the air, the room became a battleground of emotions, and the chasm between us widened with each passing second. The fragments of betrayal lay scattered, irreversibly altering the course of our once-shared journey. The divorce discussions loomed over us, a storm of emotions brewing in the wake of shattered vows. As we sat across from each other, the weight of our impending separation hung in the air. Yet just as the finality of divorce seemed imminent, fate unveiled an unexpected twist. Before we go through with this, John began hesitantly, his eyes clouded with a hidden truth, there's something you need to know. I looked at him, a mix of confusion and curiosity etched on my face. What are you talking about? He took a deep breath, his gaze avoiding mine. I've been diagnosed with a terminal illness. The doctors say I don't have much time left. The room fell into a stunned silence. Time seemed to freeze as the weight of his revelation settled over us. 
the echoes of our troubled past paled in comparison to the looming specter of mortality. What? I finally managed to whisper, the shock reverberating through my voice. He met my gaze, his eyes reflecting a strange blend of resignation and vulnerability. I didn't want you to find out like this, but we can't ignore it any longer. I thought we had more time. The gravity of the situation began to sink in, and my anger waned, replaced by a somber understanding. Why didn't you tell me sooner? I wanted to protect you, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. I didn't want this to define our time together. A heavy silence enveloped us as the reality of our circumstances settled. The divorce, once a certainty, now seemed inconsequential in the face of a limited future. Maybe we should rethink this, he suggested tentatively, his eyes searching mine for a glimmer of understanding. I took a deep breath, grappling with the sudden shift in perspective. We were ready to throw everything away, and now... Now, we need to decide how to spend the time we have left. The room, once a battleground of our grievances, became a canvas for a new chapter, one defined by terminal revelations and the uncertain journey that lay ahead. Separated by the decision to divorce, yet bound by the revelation of John's terminal illness, we embarked on an uncharted journey to a remote island. The salty breeze and the untamed landscapes mirrored the unexplored territories of our evolving relationship. Against the backdrop of crashing waves and endless horizons, we navigated the complexities of our newfound reality. The affair, once a haunting specter, lingered in the shadows but failed to eclipse the shared moments of vulnerability that unfolded on the island. One evening, as we sat on the weathered porch overlooking the ocean, John spoke, his voice a hesitant melody in the evening air. I never thought our story would take us here. I nodded, my gaze fixed on the horizon. Life has a way of surprising us. He sighed, a mixture of remorse and longing lingering in the silence. I wish things could have been different. They are different, I replied, my eyes meeting his. We have this chance to rewrite our ending to find something meaningful in the time we have left. As the days passed, we discovered a peculiar intimacy in shared sunsets and quiet conversations. The island with its untouched beauty became a silent witness to the fragility of life and love. One evening, as we strolled along the shoreline, John spoke with a newfound vulnerability. I never wanted to hurt you. I just got lost along the way. I took a deep breath, the salted air mingling with my thoughts. Maybe we both did. But here, on this island, we have a chance to rediscover each other. The affair, once a tidal wave threatening to drown us, transformed into a distant memory. In the uncharted waters of our shared solitude, a strange peace began to surface, one that defied the conventional boundaries of heartbreak and healing. As we faced the challenges of John's deteriorating health, the island became a sanctuary for acceptance and forgiveness. The uncharted waters of our shared journey, unpredictable and tumultuous, held the promise of something unspoken but profoundly felt. The island, a canvas of memories and shared moments, became the backdrop for an unconventional love story unfolding against the relentless march of time. John's terminal illness, once a looming specter, now cast a poignant shadow over our days. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting hues of orange and pink across the sky, John and I sat on the weathered porch, the rhythmic sound of the waves accompanying our thoughts. I never thought I'd find beauty in saying goodbye, John whispered, his eyes fixed on the fading light. I reached for his hand, the warmth of our connection of bittersweet reassurance. Sometimes the most beautiful things arise from the most painful moments. In the time of farewell, our conversations took on a new depth. We spoke of dreams of the life we had envisioned and the one that was slipping away. 
Each day brought a new challenge, but also an opportunity to savor the fleeting beauty of the present. One afternoon, as we walked along the shoreline, the wind tussling our hair, John turned to me. I wish I could give you more time. I smiled, the weight of his words softened by the sincerity in his eyes. Time isn't what matters now. It's how we spend it. In the quiet moments of dusk, we found solace in the shared silences, the unspoken understanding that every sunset brought us closer to an inevitable goodbye. The affair, once a tempest, seemed a distant memory in the face of our shared vulnerability. As John's health deteriorated, I became his anchor, navigating the turbulent waters of uncertainty with him. Love, in the time of farewell, transcended the boundaries of pain, becoming a quiet force that bound us together. One evening, as we sat by the fireplace, John whispered, Thank you for being here. Tears welled in my eyes, but I smiled through them. Thank you for letting me. In the dance of the flames, we found a flicker of hope, a reminder that love, even in the face of farewell, could illuminate the darkest corners of our shared journey. In the quiet aftermath of John's passing, the island held the weight of our shared memories, each corner echoing with the remnants of a love that had weathered storms. Amidst the lingering grief, I discovered a truth of letters, his silent confessions that spoke louder than the spoken words we had shared. The letters, neatly tucked away in a weathered box, chronicled the progression of his illness and the depth of his love. Each word was a brushstroke painting a poignant picture of a man grappling with mortality and seeking redemption. One evening, as I sat by the window overlooking the sea, I unfolded the first letter, his handwriting a familiar comfort. My love, it began, I write these words knowing I may never have the chance to say them aloud. The affair was a mistake, a misguided attempt to find solace in a world that seemed to be slipping away. But in my heart, you were always the anchor. Tears welled in my eyes as I read through the pages, each one a testament to his struggles and sacrifices. In one letter, he wrote, I liquidated our assets because I wanted you to live freely. The divorce was my way of setting you free, even if it meant breaking myself in the process. His words, a symphony of remorse and love, echoed through the empty room. Another letter revealed, you still have time to think about it. Let's clean up one step at a time. The inked sentences, a plea for understanding, resonated in the quiet solitude of the island. Days turned into nights as I immersed myself in his letters, finding solace in the unspoken conversations that spanned the length of his illness. His words, a final act of love and understanding, became the bridge that connected our shared past to the uncertain future. One day, as I read a particularly heartfelt letter, I whispered, I wish I had known. In my solitude, the island became a sanctuary for mourning and healing. The letters, like whispered echoes of his presence, guided me through the labyrinth of grief, transforming our complex history into a poignant narrative of love and redemption. The island, once a witness to the tumultuous chapters of our lives, stood as a silent guardian in the aftermath of John's passing. In the echoes of goodbye, I found both solace and the subtle ache of a love that lingered beyond the realms of mortality. As I wandered through the familiar paths and hidden corners we had explored together, I felt the weight of his absence. The breeze whispered tales of our shared laughter, and the rustle of leaves carried echoes of conversations that now lived in memories. One evening, as I stood by the gravestone I had erected next to his old house, I spoke into the stillness. I miss you, John. The island is not the same without you. The wind carried my words away, and for a moment it felt as though he were there listening. The island, once a canvas for our shared experiences, became a sanctuary for my grief, allowing the echoes of our goodbye to reverberate through the landscape. In the quietude of my solitude, a friend from the island approached. You've been through a lot, he said, his eyes reflecting both sympathy and understanding. 
I nodded, a subtle smile playing on my lips. It's a journey, isn't it? One that I'd never expected to take. He sat beside me, and together we watched the sunset, the colors reflecting the transient nature of life. You've left an indelible mark on this place, just like him, he remarked. Our dialogues unfolded like the gentle waves that caressed the shore, and in the shared silence I found a semblance of peace. He used to love watching the sunset from here, I said, my gaze fixed on the horizon. He told me he was at peace, the friend replied. I hope you find that too. As the sun dipped below the edge of the world, casting a golden glow across the water, I whispered to the wind, Thank you for being my home, both in life and in goodbye. In the echoes of our shared history, the island became a testament to a love that transcended time, a love that found solace in the quiet moments of goodbye. Decades after John's passing, the island had become my refuge, a place where memories danced with the wind and the echoes of our shared journey reverberated through time. I officially became an island resident surrounded by the whispers of nature and the perpetual tranquility that enveloped the landscape. One day, as I stood by John's gravestone, I felt a strange sense of calm. You're still here, aren't you? I murmured, as if expecting a response from the wind itself. A familiar face, a fellow islander, approached. It's been a long journey for you, he observed, his eyes reflecting a mixture of respect and understanding. I nodded, a gentle smile playing on my lips. But it's been a journey worth taking. The friend sat beside me, and together we watched the waves gently kiss the shore. He left an impact on all of us, he said. Your love story is a part of the island's history now. As we spoke, the sun dipped below the horizon, casting hues of orange and pink across the sky. The island, bathed in the soft glow of twilight, felt like a haven for healing and reflection. In the decades spent on the island, I had become a part of its fabric, a living reminder of a love that endured beyond the constraints of time. The memories of our shared laughter, the whispered conversations, and the bittersweet farewells had become intertwined with the very essence of the land. In the silence that followed, I whispered, I'm at peace here. The friend smiled, his eyes reflecting a shared understanding. It's as if the island has absorbed your story, becoming a part of your forever. As I looked out at the familiar landscape, I knew that the island held not just my memories, but also the promise of an eternal connection. I'll be here, surrounded by the echoes of our love, until the end of my days. In the quietude of the island, I found a sense of completion, a peace that transcended the complexities of our past and embraced the enduring legacy of a love that had weathered the storms and found solace in forever.